Welcome to Electrified, it's your host, Dylan Loomis. There are some articles out there today talking about an inflection in overall EV sales, but I think some context is needed for these stories. Kelly Blue Book said November EV sales were 13.6% higher than the previous November, and about 8.5% of the new cars Americans bought last month were fully electric. They said the EV oversupply problem has largely disappeared. Dealers end in November with a 93-day supply of EVs to sell, not far off from their 85-day supply of all types of cars. EV inventory declined 13.8% in November alone. So that 8.5% figure for November may have been higher than October, but the EV share of sales in quarter three in the US was 8.9%, the highest level recorded. That just means we've really been stuck in that eight to 9% full EV adoption range for a majority of 2024. And frankly, we should see a spike in EV sales for quarter four because many Americans, if they're paying attention, should be concerned that the EV tax credit will go away at some point next year. On that note, just a heads up, if some vehicles do lose the tax credit come January 1st, it may only be temporary and for a matter of weeks. Reason being, every year new restrictions and requirements come into play, so some of these automakers need time to actually prove that their vehicles should still qualify for the full credit. But other companies like Kia have said they're preparing to scale back production of the EV9 because the car will not qualify for the full credit as of January 1st. In their case though, when their battery factory in Georgia comes online, they're expecting that vehicle to re-qualify. There are some positive trends for full EVs across Europe as well. This chart is from AJ on X. For us though, just focus on these two straight dotted lines, this one right here and this one right here, creating this triangle where you see this green arrow pointing up. The bottom line is basically just the trend line for the percentage of BEV adoption dating back to the beginning of 2023 and projected out to the end of 2025. That extrapolation puts us at about 18% EV adoption. But if you draw a trend line for the same data and you start at the beginning of 2024, you'll see this trend line that takes us up well over 24% at the end of 2025. However, the context I want to add here, the trend line for 2024 is clearly starting at a local low. That time just happened to be the point at which BEV sales were at the lowest across the EU at about 12%. So if you start a trend line from there, of course you're going to have a positive result and a bigger increase will be shown. Are there some encouraging signs? Sure, but with all of the context, incentives going away, legacy OEMs pulling back from EV production. I just want people to be prepared, especially in the US for a challenging year for full EV sales in 2025. Again, if the EV tax credit does go away. This FSD 13 video is the definition of the username and edge case. They set up a dead end trap and watch what the vehicle does. Okay, here we go. This is so funny. What's gonna happen? Yeah, keep pushing. Is it gonna back up because of that? Because you keep coming? Oh, oh, it's reversing, dude. Oh my god. Holy moly, bro. Oh my god. Oh, it's gonna hit the. Oh, oh, dude, it's doing amazing. Oh my. Bro, this is. Do you want to do it like multiple times or? or... Yeah, yeah, I'm done. So, ability to get unstuck? Check. But I have found a safety critical situation in this video of version 13. I'm highlighting this one specifically because, again, it seems like the problem is because of the map data. You can't do this. Nope. If you didn't see it the first time, if you look on the right, the map data is telling it that the vehicle can turn left at this intersection. 
But if it were to rely on the cameras looking straight ahead, you see this do not enter sign right here and this lane right here that version 13 thinks it can use is not correct because that's only for vehicles coming from the right. I'm pretty sure the question I'm going to submit for say for Q4 is going to be about Tesla's plans for the map data. Kalina who works on AI branches at Tesla said, we've been working hard to make sure everyone has a wonderful Christmas with both version 13 and the holiday release. It sounds like internally the goal at Tesla is to have both delivered to everybody by Christmas. Understandably, many of you were a bit triggered the last time I brought up the fact that in the United States, internet service providers have been allowed to sell customer data to third parties since 2017. Back then, Congress passed a resolution to eliminate FCC privacy rules that would have banned the practice. So before 17, ISPs would have needed your permission to go ahead and sell your personal data in your browser history, but with a stroke of a pen, Congress said, nope, we don't need that anymore. Which yes, means now your ISPs can legally sell your web browsing history, your app usage data, real-time location information, and much of your personal information. They're not just doing this to get kickbacks or something, they're actually monetizing this, selling that data to advertisers, marketers, or other third parties. So yeah, if you want to protect your family from this nonsense, all you need to do is sign up for Surfshark VPN, the sponsor of this video. Surfshark encrypts all of your online activity and masks your real IP address so no one, not even your ISP, can track your data. Surfshark offers a lot more like clean web, which removes annoying ads and one account can be used on an unlimited number of family devices. Just head to surfshark.com slash electrified for four extra months of Surfshark at an unbeatable holiday price. This pricing is for a limited time. So if you've been on the fence all year, now would be your time. The link is below. Joe Tetmeyer said Giga Texas has a whole new mezzanine floor constructed above the main entrance. It has double the floor space available and is big enough for a whole new production line. Just also happens a ton of new production equipment is staged across the highway waiting for installation. I just wanted to add, I've seen a lot of people saying this is for the new more affordable Tesla, but we have to remember Tesla told us those will be on existing manufacturing lines, which means yes, there's at least a chance Tesla is doing some very early work for cyber cab production. The cyber cab is set to be a revolution again in manufacturing. The Tesla team has been very excited about it, but given how new it is, it's going to take some time for Tesla to figure that out. Joe also said Giga Texas 4680 production line expansion work is nearly completed, going up to eight lines from the original four. And he said, great sign for battery production at Giga Texas in 2025. And remember earlier this year, Tesla said they were on track for the production launch with the dry cathode in quarter four. And that's the step that would enable cell costs to be significantly below available alternatives, which was the original goal of the 4680 program. And if we read the tea leaves, remember Lars said Tesla is not just going to randomly build 4680s unless they have a place to put them. He said, so we're going to make sure we're prudent about that. Plus earlier this year, Tesla said the 4680 production ramp was ahead of the ramp of the Cybertruck and the goal was to keep it that way, not only for Cybertruck, but for our future vehicle programs. As far as we can tell, the Cybertruck production rate is somewhat stuck around that 1000 number per week, but the evidence is telling us that Tesla is continuing to build out the 4680 production lines. Tesla said it wouldn't just race to make 4680s for the fun of it, they need somewhere to go. So could this extra production be in preparation for the Cybercab? We already know that platform is going to be battery agnostic so it can take any type of cell. And lastly, remember what Tesla said in Q4 last year, they were only running one production line, one assembly line, and then using two assembly lines in addition for yield and rate improvement trials. And we have a fourth in commissioning and four more will be installed in quarter three of 2024. So here's my point with all of this. As far as we can tell, Tesla spent the majority of 2024 with only two actual production lines for 4680s. The other two were actually more for trials. The last update we got September 13th this year, Tesla was at an annual gigawatt hour run 
run rate of 17.2. Thus, if two lines can do about 17 gigawatt hours, that would mean six lines. If these additional four are all for full production, that would be 51 gigawatt hours plus. Bear in mind, those are run rate figures, but there's a very real chance if things go well with the cyber cap and there's the need for that much 4680 production, Tesla may finally hit that 100 gigawatt hours produced number in 2026. Almost definitely by then as a run rate, but also possibly in terms of raw output for the year as well. NHTSA has proposed a voluntary national framework for the evaluation and oversight of certain vehicles equipped with automated driving systems. If you've been following along, this should sound very familiar. This is the AV Step program. Under AV Step, NHTSA's assessment of an application would be informed by the views of an independent third party assessor. The proposed program would provide provide NHTSA and the public with greater insight into ADS development and operational data. For now, this is just a proposal and still needs to go through the public comment period. And to make it abundantly clear if it's not already, this is not the federal government laying out a federal regulation for robotaxi deployment. In short, this program is aiming to gather data and insight that can support the future development of ADS safety standards. In the document itself, NHTSA said it would publish a lot of the applications and reporting information to improve transparency. And if a company like Tesla were to participate in this, they'd be required to submit periodic and event triggered reports direct to NHTSA. There are two different steps for participation in this program. Step one would be for vehicles using fallback personnel, AKA a safety driver, and then step two, vehicles that can operate without fallback personnel. And just to be technical, under the AV Step program definition, fallback personnel does include people who would work at a remote operating center as well. It's just someone who continuously would supervise the performance of an ADS operated vehicle in real time and intervene whenever necessary to prevent a hazardous event by exercising any means of vehicle control. And with this one, the main reason I'm spending time on it, if you did not see that video earlier this year about the AV Step program, it's really designed to offer an alternative regulatory pathway that could allow for the deployment of a larger number of autonomous vehicles. Currently, a true robotaxi would be limited to 2,500 vehicles deployed on the roads per year. This AV Step program could help to change all of that. VW and labor leaders have reached an agreement to cut capacity while avoiding factory closures. VW agreed to keep the brand's 10 German factories operational and to reinstate job security agreements until 20. 30. In exchange, workers agreed to forego some bonuses and to cut capacity at five sites by several hundred thousand units. But these measures are a far cry from the drastic savings that VW originally proposed. If you've been around the channel, you should know that running factories well below max capacity is not a good thing for overall margins. There will be a Tesla OTA update for the TPMS warning light that may not remain illuminated between drive cycles, failing to warn the driver of low tire pressure. This problem affected about 694,000 Model Y, 3, and Cybertruck vehicles. One of the first large-scale energy storage systems and one of the biggest in Chile will indeed use Tesla Megapacks, to be specific, 200 of them. Thus, this new project should be roughly $200 million in revenue for Tesla. The project is expected to begin operations by mid-2026. Tesla stock capped off a volatile week at $421.06, down 3.46%, while the NASDAQ was up 1.03%. The volume was 31% higher than the average. Don't forget, check out Surfshark linked below if you're interested. Again, could be a last minute gift idea for family or friends. I do plan to upload Monday the 23rd and then I'll keep you posted from there. Hope you guys have a safe and wonderful weekend. Please like the video. If you did, you can find me on X linked below. And a huge thank you to all of my Patreon supporters.